let's recap what your characters have learned so far and what's been going on leading up to where we will be today. Starting with, let's go with Finnick. What's Hess been up to? How's Hess doing? Hess had a fine day. It was all sunshine and rainbows and nothing bad happened, she says sarcastically. But no, so Hess split off with Millie and Winward and they went to Hashtag Woods to go, you know, find Hawk, which I thought was Hawk and not Hawk like hawking something. Like I thought the A lot of people thought that. I thought that too until I saw how he spelled it. And I was like, oh, but that that makes sense. It does make sense given what he does. I love how in no universe does Hawk actually go by his first name. I love it. But um, yeah, so we went to Hawk's cabin to go see if there were any clues or anything. Fought some magic remnant shit that got left behind by someone who we have no idea who sent it. And we found Hawk's and Darren's bodies bereft of the- well, Hawk's we know is definitely bereft of his soul. We don't know if Darren's is because Hess failed that role and had a mental breakdown and then somebody was in her head for like a couple seconds and she has no idea who it is. But good news, you know. We're figuring it out, you know, Hess and Wynne were talked and they're building a soul machine to launch Hess into the spirit realm to go see everybody's souls and find people. So that can't have any consequences at all, at all. None whatsoever. It's definitely not going to detract a lot of unwanted attention. As opposed to the multiverse reality overlaying it on herself every couple of minutes? Fair. And so when word at some point kicked you out of her shop because she needs to go find some stuff and you need to go find some stuff. I think um, it was just dis- it was probably a quick discussion like I have better access getting this without you. You probably have better access getting this without me. We'll meet back up in like a couple hours. <laughs> Figure out the Edelwood somehow. Yeah. Also, I need to go see my partner and give him smooches. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure that was not thrown in there, but shipping life, okay? I was about to say, wait, on which part was that? Nah, I'm just, I'm being silly because I I ship Wynn and Kyle very hard. It is a very cute ship. We ha- we still haven't gotten to see those two, those two together, and I'm trying. I know. Scheduling! Yeah, scheduling. And what else been going on with Angel? So, Angel got to town to meet Roz, who never showed up, and so combing through Roz's apartment, she pieced together why Roz wanted her here to investigate and make sense of the visitor, stranger, whatever you want to call him, and to try and find the missing pieces. And some of that research has led Angel to the final prophecies of John Hendricks related to the situation that we're experiencing, probably. Let's see. She's reached out to some of, let's call them connections of hers, to ask around about the stranger and try and get information on where he'll be at any given time so that Well, we'll see what she does with that information whenever she gets it. Then we went to the theater because she heard about Cass and ransacked Cass's space at the theater. After getting caught up with Millie and Cole about the um, missing people who are now soulless. Right, they did catch up on that. And we found Cass's journal detailing a number of things about what she's been seeing and what she doesn't see in her visions, that being the stranger. And, well, I'm planning on going over to the lab to speak with Shay Livermore, Hess's boss. We did also get the name of an organization called Multi. Which I'll have to figure out the spelling of. Yeah. And... Cole recognized a voice on the recording as belonging to a friend of his that worked at the hospital named Lily Blythe, so he went to go talk to her to see if she knew anything, or Cass talked to her about anything. Yep. Are you making any attempt to show up at the same time to the lab? Have you communicated anything to each other? 
specifically has, have you mentioned to Angel that you're going to be going to the lab too? Yeah, I think this is probably like what, about an hour or two after we originally texted and I gave her Shay's number? Eh, something like that maybe. Okay. So yeah, there'd probably be a click, 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 whoosh. Hey, on my way over, um, actually need to get some stuff for the project. Wynn and I are working on, um, meet you at the front. It'd just be easier if I can sign you in and everything. You get a thumbs up emoji. Maybe get lunch afterwards. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, lunch. Didn't have time to bake cookies. Sorry. Added to the list of everything I need to bake for everybody else. That gets another thumbs up emoji gets a bunch of smiley faces and thumbs up back, because even if it's just emojis, Hess is not a quick talker. No. Hess is a chaotic ray of sunshine with lots of trauma. So many knives. So many knives for your DM to play with. It's almost like I put a target on my back. Just a little bit. Don't worry, you're not the only one. Yep. So you both show up to the lab around the same time. There's a visitor's entrance area that's more easily accessible to the public. I'm just gonna say y'all have agreed to meet there and you can get to where you need to get from there. And I'll pull up and you see each other's cars and what do you do? Hess would get out and wave and be like hi! Probably try and remember Angel doesn't do hugs so stop herself. I think right now for her cork, she's got like little cat ears that are like fluctuating on the top of her head with her emotions and everything. And then her eyes are, the sciatica is like this bright neon green with blue irises. <laughs> so it looks very interesting. <laughs> but yeah, so Hess waves to Angel and it's like, hello. <laughs> How's it going? Ah, uh, <laughs> didn't know. Is mm, I feel that. Yeah, it's uh. uh, d- uh d- d- what have you all learned? Do you know the name John Hendricks? Do I DM? Roll to put a face to a name. Okay, cool. So yeah, that's gonna be uh. I rolled twelve, and then my stuff is plus one, so thirteen altogether. So. At some point, you probably had a phase where you were kind of obsessed with oracles. So, you know, he wasn't the first oracle in Oak Ridge, but he was the most famous one. Like, he was the first one who kind of made a splash in history. He had very accurate predictions leading up to around the time when the Brimoire showed up. He is dead, so I recommend you you can't get a dead on him, but I would say like you you are very familiar with which of his prophecies were accurate and which were not, which also being a realm hopper, it makes sense that the ones that were incorrect might have been correct in some of those other worlds, cause when you were studying them. Yeah. I can think of an interesting reason why you might have been looking into another famous oracle in which of his prophecies were incorrect versus ones that were correct and why I'm, can you guess the reason gee does it have to do with a certain hole appearing in the ground yeah so that that could have been why you started digging into that so you are you're very familiar with it and I would say you are very familiar with his pro- with his final prophecy about a shadow coming to Oak Ridge or coming to the valley Oh, so it clicks into place. (laughs) Yeah. You also know there's a lot of debate as to which parts of that may or may not be incorrect, because sometimes, like, specifically, like, with, like, timelines with prophecies can be kind of iffy, because um, there are some things that can, like, adjust those. It might have been him erring on the safe side. That might have just been the the potential that he saw. I was gonna say, see all of recorded mythology when a king is ever told, this grandchild shall be your doom. <laughs> yeah, you suddenly have that oh shit moment because three days after the fall of the last oracle, if the darkness is not banished, it will consume it all. Or something like that. Yeah. 
Yeah, so I think you see the cat ears, like, they perk up like she's remembering, and then immediately do the flatten, and then kind of almost try and get bigger and poofy. Ah, oh, good, so you're familiar. Your hair starts to fluff a little bit. <laughs> yeah, um, and it's noticeable, and she didn't notice it, but, like, right where her bangs are, this, like, huge white streak is now there. That wasn't there before or anything. And it doesn't seem to be, you know, part of her cosplay stuff, but yeah, you know, when you get a corruption point, but she's like, oh, oh gods, uh, magic, uh, runes, cast, lasso, oh, oh my stars, calm, <sighs> calm, calm, calm down. Just take a deep breath. You can see out of the corner of your eye, there's like a, one of the security guards is looking over at you with concern, like, is everything okay? Oh, no, it's okay, Jasper. Um, just got reminded of a scary podcast I was listening to. It shouldn't do those at night. <laughs> he just kind of nods and gives you a thumbs up. We have time. It's not as bad as it seems. He said three days, but there is a way that we can extend that if we can manage to weaken his hold on the city. And I have plans. He... he, I'm assuming... Stranger? Yes. That makes a lot of sense, actually. That makes a disturbing amount of sense. I do not like this thread. Why did we decide to pluck Loom of Fate again? I'm not quite sure this was by choice. No, good point. I don't think any of it was. Well, no, certain things were. Um, certain things are still choice. Fate happens whether we pluck it or not. True. So you all decided to look into that. That's good to know. We now have a timeline. We found Hawks and Darren. Heard about that. Yeah, the, they don't have their souls. Winwood and I are working on something to fix that, but it might... Potentially you may not want to be around me when I turn it on. It's kind of like opening a buffet for very hungry carnivals and all you're putting out is a bunch of meat and ringing the dinner bell while holding said meat. Potentially. Well, we'll see how that goes. Right. Uh, I don't think there's anything else that we discover. Um, potential hiccup, just so everyone knows. Someone was in my brain when I was doing magic. Don't know who, don't know why, don't know when. Don't know what they gleaned from it, but, you know, potentially we there may be somebody using mind magics, which is never fun. I could explain some things as well if it's the stranger or related to him. Yes, that is uh, disastrous and not very good, and I would very much like to kick him out of the city. <laughs> Especially if he calls Cass's death. I don't think there's any question about that. You heard it. You listened. Yeah. I'm not gonna mention that. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say, Hess already has a lot of guilt with that relationship. She don't need any more. <laughs> Precisely. <laughs> also, Hess is completely unaware that Cass is in recording booth that someone had left on. Yeah. She just knows theater. Wait, someone... Mm. <laughs> Hmm. Like someone forgot to turn it off after a recording session. Okay. <laughs> okay. Less DM evil machinations. Got it. <laughs> no, it was just, I was like, is there anything recorded? I rolled up and like, yeah, it, it recorded. And the only logical reason I could think of it recording beyond certain character interference, which she would have probably not interfered that way, was just someone was recording something and then forgot to turn it off. <laughs> been there, done that. We forgot to tell Craig to go home. <laughs> but yeah, she just fixes her hair, kind of straightens, you know, her flannel, adjusts her bag. Okay, I'm getting you a visitor's pass. You're meeting with my boss for the potential interview with your podcast. Lest I know the better, because plausible deniability, and as much as I enjoy working with you, I also enjoy paying my bills. Quite alright. Come yell, I guess. I don't know if I'll be able to hear you, but it's worth a shot. I can try portaling to you. I'll holler if I need you. Said the text, help. 
999 because we're both okay. <laughs> just shit. <laughs> yeah, but so Pass would walk him up, introduce Angel to Jasper, you know, just do some pleasantries like, oh, she's here to do an interview with Shay, you know, shouldn't be too long. I just need to get a few things out of the lab for um, work from home stuff. Because I'm assuming they have work from home schedules in this question mark. Yeah, and there's sometimes you're allowed to take certain things home with you for, like, smaller-scale experimentation. They do keep note of the, what materials you take and, and how much quantities, just so people can't, like, sneakily get too much of something or whatever, because you gotta be careful with some of it. But you are allowed to take home materials. Yeah, I was gonna say, I don't think magnesium and the scale that we need is gonna be any watch list activity, but you never know. No, I mean, the scale might have some questions, depending on who's using it, except it was a very specific scale, but... True. Well, we'll, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Yep. And since you work at the lab, you are able to get a visitor pass for Angel. Alright, before they get too far in, Angel will ask, Right, I forgot to ask, how high in the organization is your boss? They manage a section of the lab. They're not particular, you know, they're not a head honcho, but they're not just a general map. It does, uh, yeah? Does that make sense? Shay uh, is one of the people who works under one of the head honchos, but it's one of the not as big through as laid around head honcho. She works under Theodore Martin, who is one of the scientists who first discovered and started researching the grimoire, but he's, he's cool. He's, he's a nerd. Yeah, I mean, Shay works for Theo. He's great. Um, he's been studying the Grimoire and everything. He's just he's super great. You should ask him about his D&D campaign. It's wonderful to hear about his barbarian. It's just great to see, you know, this nerdy man just lose his shit. It's what... anyway, Also, he's a topic. huge fan of things like safety tools and session zeros. He just, he's a delight. He's how everyone should be about it, like tabletop games. He's really great, a huge advocate for safety tools, all that sort of thing. It's a right subject at hand, however. She's high up, but not um, on the highest food chain. She's an assistant to one of the head honchos, if that helps. And she also runs the section of the lab I work in. All right, I can make it work. Probably not, like, super political, but she's got... She probably knows people. Maybe. Yeah. They're great. You know, she's super nice, don't worry about it, you know, they're not going to bite or anything. I believe she's had all her shots anyway, so you should be good if she does. What? That was a joke. <laughs> I'm joking. I'm trying to make a joke. I have been bitten a time or two in my life. Human bites are the worst. <laughs> We're not going down that road. <laughs> But agreed if it's non-consensual. Oh, I mean, human mouths are filthy. They really are. Yeah. Yeah. Now I have some... Anyways. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so... Who wants to have their scene be first? Does the cam Do we want the camera to follow Hess as she goes to find her stuff? Or do we want to follow Angel first? Because we're going to kind of probably bounce back and forth a bit. Go ahead with Hess first. Okay, I was gonna say, Hess probably at least, you know, guides you to where Shay's office is and then does the quick, Hi, this is Angel, good to see you, Shay, just going to grab a few things from the lab, we'll catch up, I'll shoot you an email about it, and starts walking back towards her lab area. Hi, Hess, as you're walking away. Hi, um, lemon meringue cookies next time? She's used to the speed at which you tend to move around sometimes. Yeah, I try not to make caffeinated characters. And yeah. <laughs> you try. You don't succeed, but you try. Um, but yeah, so she walks to her little... I'm assuming it's a very small, like, cubby in a bigger lab. Yeah. I'll say another thing you remember is for the thing that you and when we're building, you'll need something that is special to the person. Okay. Which there might be something in his cubby worth investigating, possibly. Yeah. You'd like to roll the study place of power? 
Sure, I will roll to study a place of power with power? Yeah. I can do math. I rolled nine on the dice and I have a plus one. I'll say with that also, um, no one's going to particularly notice you as you just, like, poke into Darren's cubby, which is probably, like, I'll say it's near enough to yours that it's not too weird, and sometimes people, like, will leave notes or something. Yeah, and I'm pretty sure with Hess being, like, the stress baker she is, people are used to her leaving notes asking, text me what you want, I can't sleep this week. (laughs) I can't sleep this week, oh, poor Hess. She did it to herself, the little, demented, obsessed, realm-hopping goblin she is. That is very true. So, don't feel bad for her. As much as I love her, don't feel bad. (laughs) So, as you're poking around, just looking for stuff, because you don't know what'll end up being useful, you see this old business card that is for his dad's business, which he ended up having to sell when he hit financial troubles, which is Callaway Hardware. And Callaway used to be a pretty decently big name in Oak Ridge before they had those financial troubles and just kind of dropped off, so uh, something about that feels like it could be important. Okay. She'll reach into her bag, make it look like she's writing a note, and then place the note in the cubby and then slip the card out into, like, her wallet. Yeah, so yeah, you're able to grab that, because you need something important to them and a true name, so. Yeah, as far as I know, Darren Calloway is his true name. Or, like, a name a name that is important. Wynne would probably explain to some degree of detail, however much of that you actually got is a different story. I think being a magic user and just, like, absorbing magical folklore and rules of magic, she understands, because even in magic, true names are binding and can be used in a lot of different rituals, so. Yeah, so it's a a name that is important, so perhaps the fact that he has this business card still. Yeah, so she'll tuck it into her wallet, tuck it back in her bag, put her bag in the cut. Well, no, she's just grabbing stuff, so she's not going to put on her lab coat. Um, and she'll go to the supply closet where all the chemicals are kept. And go get the magnesium first, because I feel that's going to be easier than the scale. Like, I feel like there needs to be a roll for parts of this, but I'm not sure. Uh, roll to study place power to see if you can find the magnesium. Okay. I'll do that. So plus my power six, so that's a failure. Yeah, no, you you don't find any. Looks like they're out. Okay. Mm, well, okay, that's not the worst if we don't get it here at the lab, unless it specifically needs to be lab grade. Because you can get magnesium pills from, you know, a grocery store. <laughs> someone may be using it or they may like have some set aside for something so if you would like to um, roll to hit the streets to see if you can find anyone using it yeah I was gonna say I'll check the logs hit the streets yeah. uh, power again right because this is a place of yeah uh, roll with their circle yeah. okay better 11 all right so you look around and you see someone oh who... wait the fail means I get to level up Yes, I finally hit all the circles. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> That's for later. But still, hooray, growth. As you realize that it's not there, you just puff a little, turn around, and you see someone standing right there working with them. They're working on an experiment trying to guess, like, how much they need, so, like, using just, like, little bits at a time. Okay. Well, let me see if one word shopping list gave me a specific amount. Whitworth's chopping list would have given you a specific amount if you do not have it written down, are you? Okay, yeah, I don't think it, the specific amount was shared in chat. I just have specifically magnesium in the scale. Yeah. You need 21 grams of magnesium. Oh, that's it? Yeah. It's not that much. And a mirror made of 21 grams of silver light. Okay, so that's not too terrible. So... I would probably recognize this person who's using it. Yeah. You know this person. Probably, like, know them in passing. Okay. 
Let's see, I did dudes for the last one. Let's go. Oh, hey, Lily. How are you doing? <laughs> Not Lily. Lily exists somewhere else. Oh, no, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> um, Janice. Oh, hey, Jen. How are you doing? <laughs> oh, hey, yes. Doing pretty well. Just working on a little idea I had. It's not quite working like I thought it would, but I'm getting some interesting readings. Uh, anything I can help you with? Yeah, I was wondering. I just need about 22 grams of that magnesium. I'm just working on my own experiment at home with it, and I was just looking to get a little bit to top off what I was doing. Oh, yeah, sure. Here, take what you need. She'll gently push it towards you. I, I figured out that part of it. Plus, I think we're getting in more tomorrow. Oh, well, that's good. Um, what are you... And, you know, she'll, like, start scraping it and weighing it out. Uh, what are you trying to do? I had an idea involving some more, like, fine-tuning of effects of magic on different materials. Okay, like conductivity or the length of the magic component, like runes and sort of, or something other? I mean, if you don't want to tell me until you're ready to publish, it's totally fine as well. I don't want to put you on the spot. I just, I don't know, I had this idea about different ways it could be used. Magic could be used to perhaps enhance supplements, because I know there are some people who can do, like, different kinds of healing magic. What if there's a way to add magic to supplements, specifically, like, maybe someone's body have a harder time absorbing it to make it easier to absorb? I don't know. Oh, like with um, autoimmune diseases and sort of a thing. Like, yes. You know, a defici- an iron deficiency. Yes, it's it's a getting the details of that. It's a little tricky. I'm mostly just testing to see how it affects absorption rates, or like at least the rates at which things dissolve. It's brilliant. I wish you luck. If you need another head, you have my number. Um, you know, I'll be happy to help you try and figure it out. The only thing I could think of is maybe some sort of maybe researching into which elements of practices, you know, back in the day, you know, certain casters would use certain things to enhance, maybe seeing if there's something that can enhance the magnesium to help the absorption? Yeah, I was thinking about them. I was planning to hit the library after our work today to see if they had any books, because a lot of the tomes that we have here are more towards extending lifespans and less of the improved like improving certain areas just because you know of like the quote unquote old men the head honchos in charge are um, more into just extending and preserving their own lives than anything else and... the total boys club yeah. yes if you do go to the library someone I found very helpful there Bart he's amazing at magic and everything oh, um, fact Bart's missing that's right <laughs> uh, well she's just trying to make conversation yeah. and not like you know let people know there's like an issue in the city because potential doom and gloom to swallow us whole. Yeah, <laughs> she's trying to play it cool. Yeah, he's he's been pretty helpful so far. I was just um, getting some numbers, getting some facts and figures, so I can maybe run this up to get a little more support and direction in where ways I can further take the testing to see how viable an option it is. Definitely. If you need help, let me know. Um, I'd be happy to help, um, even if it's just to bounce ideas off of. Um, or, you know, I'm doing the weekly cookie order again, so if there's a treat you want, let me know. Well, thanks. Glad you stopped by. Is there anything else I can help you with? or? No, I just need to get some... What was the other slow... I can't remember what it was. Slotodyme? A mirror made with exactly 21 grams of sodalite. I know someone was working with the soda light mirrors a while back. Do we still have those in the supply closet, or are they down in the other lab? I think there's probably a couple left in the supply closet. They don't usually get used very much, but I was in there looking for something else, and I think there's like at least one or two left. Perfect. I uh, just need one of those. I'm trying to see if it affects scrying at all, if it can, you know, be enhanced to help like find missing people and things like that. Ah, interesting. I can see a lot of good, helpful applications for that. You just gotta be careful who has access to that, because that could be bad people trying yeah. to find... Yeah. Oh, well, just let me know how it works. Scrying's not really an area I am familiar with. 
Uh, I dabble, but it's not my main, you know, I prefer. And she kind of does the, like, elemental, like, flashy, you know, lightnings coming off her fingers. <laughs> yeah. That one takes a bit more work, but it definitely is a lot of fun. Oh, yes. Well, good luck, Jen. I look forward to, you know, seeing the results, and if it gets published, you know, hopefully you'll be up for... I'm trying to think if they would have a award. I think they would have an award in-house. I'm trying to think of a name for it. The Gimme. You know, I hope you get a Gimme. <laughs> Just, you know, go more. Yeah. In <laughs> I hope so, too. Thanks, S. See you later. Later. So she'll go back in the closet and look for the mirrors and grab the two of them because she's not quite sure. Yeah, it's a, it's a little specific. We'll see if one of them which one of them works. And while Hess is rummaging around in the supply closet, we pan over to Angel as she enters Shay's office. And so Shay says, Oh, I heard your Angel Dea friend of Hess's. Yes, that's me. Pleasure to meet you. Said you were looking to interview me for something? Why don't you come on and have a seat? She's very friendly. Right. Uh, yes, I have a podcast called The Light of Day. I thought your voice sounded familiar. It's a very good show. Thank you. I had a feeling that you actually had connections to the magical world. Oh, yes. Quite, quite. So, I'm gonna cut right to the chase. It's not technically about my podcast, though I am doing an episode eventually about what I'm currently looking into. Alright. How can I help you with that? I'm sure you're familiar with the individual come to town recently that's got everyone up in an uproar. Roll to persuade an NPC. Oh, does it have to be that? Yes. Seven. All right. So you're trying to get her to tell you what she knows about the stranger, basically? Well, at the moment, I'm just trying to clarify that she does know what I'm referring to. Okay, on a hit, they see your point and do as you ask. We have them a bit of a premature role, but... I was gonna say, overall, I'm trying to... I was looking at the moves. I'm technically trying to weaken his standing with power. Is the overall goal. I think right now, actually figure someone out might be better, because you're trying to figure out what she knows, so if you would like to change that to plus mind. Oh yeah, so just change the roll I got? Yeah. That's a nine then. On a hit, ask two. On a seven and nine, they ask one as well. I want to know who's pulling their strings. Okay. And... How could I put her in my debt? Okay. Who is pulling your character strings? You know she works with Theodore Martin, who probably is one of the lower ones on the totem pole. He's not really up and involved in a lot of the politics, which means she isn't either. But you get the feeling with how she reacts when you dance around to the mentioning of the stranger. She doesn't like him, so you get the feeling that he isn't pulling her strings. Okay. He makes her kind of uncomfortable. She's not sure how she feels about him. And how could I put her character in my dad? I... Hmm. She does get to ask one of me. Or you get to ask one of me, rather. Yeah. On a seven to nine. I may be familiar with this individual to which you're referring, but what's your interest in him? To be perfectly frank, my interest is in releasing the stranglehold he's got on the city. You say that, and it's like she relaxes and she kind of like leans forward on her elbows and says quietly, Well, from what I can tell, sometimes that stranglehold comes from 
Well, in a town like this, if you have information that could make someone look bad or weak in their standing, it's easy to get a hold on them. And I know my boss is not particularly a fan. I haven't met this individual myself, but I get the feeling that he's not working with him willingly. Basically, Theodore is being blackmailed. To some extent, probably, by the stranger. All right, I can work with that. Yeah, she very much wants him to not be blackmailed because he's a good boss. No, some people like him because he gives them or tells them what they want, but other people don't like him very much. They just aren't exactly in a position to do much about it. But he's definitely very quickly trod his way up to the top. So I've heard. Do you think you could get me a meeting with your boss, Theo? I am, to put it delicately, I am a problem solver for a faction within power. Now, roll to persuade an NPC, and I'll give you a plus one forward on that. Thank God. Gives it a plus one roll. Oh, and you did that plus one. That's a seven. <laughs> okay. Hmm. How does she? What does she want from Angel? Is the question. Fennec, any ideas? Because <laughs> you created this NPC. I did create Shay. And they're delightful. I'm trying to think, like she's a good boss. Like she looks out for their people and everything. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe there's a person in the office who's not particularly going with the vibe and needs to be, like, vibe checked. Like, they're super micromanaging and crap. That's all I can think of at the moment. But that's, like, that seems super small if we're trying to, you know, do big pieces. I almost feel like I can see them kind of being a bit of a mover, like, wanting to. Mm -hmm. So maybe an introduction to Angel's contacts kind of establish, you know, a connection, and from there, you know, Shay, they would have to sell themselves and, you know, make any further, but, you know, to get that foot in the door, that's a pretty, you know, reasonable favor if you're, you know, asking somebody to get you to a higher up poncho. <laughs> in that case, you're like, well, getting a meeting with one of the open, I, sorry, the Societus Secratus Tenorium. Thank you, Zach, for making me say that out loud. Is not an easy thing to do, but perhaps a meeting for a meeting if you happen to have any influential individuals looking to hire or perhaps move into a new market. Basically, she either wants a new job or new bosses. I could ask. I don't... Well, an introduction, at least. I don't know all the ins and outs of the people I work for, but I can ask and put in a good word. That would be very much appreciated, and I will ask Theodore, see when Mr. Martin is has some availability in his schedule. No, they're having one of their usual meetings, something about I think, like, the mayor, one of them was, not the mayor, I believe our COO was going to make some kind of announcement at this meeting about something that happened. I honestly don't know what it is, but... Well, the sooner the better in this case. Let's just leave it at that. Mind if I ask what her interest in this particular individual is, as well as speaking with my boss? Well, I've reason to believe he's behind the disappearance of a friend of mine. That's why I'm here in the first place. I was meeting with her. And let's just say he's a bad sign of things to come. I can't say I know much about him. I've only seen him a couple of times in passing. Doesn't really speak much with us as much as he does the old men. I haven't actually spoke it to anyone who's seen him. Do you know what he looks like? 
Well, when I've seen him, he's well dressed, dark hair. Everyone agrees that he's rather attractive to look at, which is interesting because not everyone here has got the same tastes. You know what I mean? Right. There's just something about him that's alluring. And kind of unsettling. You ever met someone who's never been to a place before, supposedly, but knows their way around it? Like, a little too well? A little too familiar with people they're just meeting? Can't say that I have. Though I've heard similar about him. Yeah, he's... strange. That's for sure. I don't know how I feel about him. But no distinguishing marks that you've seen. No, but he's got this... You can tell when he's in the room. You know, it's just like your attention's drawn to him, even if you aren't aware that he's in the building. Alright, so he's got an aura of some kind. Yeah. It's not like anything we, I've ever seen before. You know, I've dealt with a variety of auras with different people. It's kind of like when you walk into a room with everything you've ever wanted standing right there. I've been told that before. Alright, so when you talk to your boss, just make sure you are dreadfully clear that I can make his problems go away. I hope so. Get a bad feeling with that man around. Our plan's still working. It's just taking a bit longer than she had hoped. Alright. Okay. So what are you gonna do now? Are you gonna keep talking to Shay or... I don't think so. I don't have anything else I need from her. Yeah, well, I think I'm done here. Are you going out to rejoin Hess? Yep. I'm sure I step out of the lab, putting the mirrors in my bag. Good talk. Hmm. It was a lot less painful, but also a lot less... Things are happening slower than I'd like. Ah, well, yeah, and time is of the essence. Oh, goody. Uh, right, I still need to get a scale that goes up to four figures. Do you want to tag along, or do you just want to go ahead and head back to your... I'll tag along. Alright. They should be in Lab Delta. We tend to keep most of the scales in that supply area there, so... And she'll kind of make conversation and point out different labs, like, Oh yeah, that's where Ernie caught... Daryl's sleeve on fire with the Bunsen burner, and then it was super combustible because he was using a highly flammable chemical earlier, and it got on his shirt, and it was it was quite delightful actually to watch this multicolored flame, you know, leaping about, but also not great because you know fire. Angel's not really listening, but she's taking note of the layout of this place. Okay. I'll say with your job and having to, like, find and kind of hunt things down sometimes, you're able to kind of remember where, how to get to different places, so. Yeah. So, has give you a roll to hit the streets as you try and find the scale. That's a four. That, that ain't happening, baby. Oh. There's nothing there. You don't find anything. Like, they're just, they're all gone, like somebody took them, or they're just, they've been moved and no one put a note. You find, like, some scales, but they aren't the kind of scales you need. You could probably, like, get something close, but... Uh, with this kind of ritual, I don't want close, because stuff happens. Yeah. So I think, kind of as she's looking around... The cat ears kind of like shimmer and then disappear, and then they're replaced with like these very tiny deerling buds, like a the little a deer's deer horn nubs. First horns coming in, yeah, deer horn nubs. And then um, out of the back of her pants, surprisingly, comes this like very long dragon tail with like sharp, pointy tips at the end. And she just doesn't even notice at this point as she's like walking around and trying to. <laughs> find the scales and muttering to herself like I, they were just here angel would you like to roll to see if you can find the scales yes i will yeah roll to hit the streets with power eight better than me okay on a hit you find the scale that you're looking for like someone has it 
So you choose one who I, no, I think I choose one. Whoever you're going to is juggling their own problems or whatever you need is more costly than anticipated. We well, you know when you choose that, see someone using it. So do you want it to be they have their own problems or it's going to cost you something? It'll cost me something. Also, I think the way she notices it is as her eyes She's not actively looking for it, but a kind of like, well, let's say ghostly figure of a cat jumps up on this person's desk and she notices that. She's like, Shadow, get down from there. As turns very confused. And she goes over to like shoo the ghost cat off of his work surface and, oh, that's what we're looking for. Yeah, a couple paper, papers flutter and Shadow hops off the desk and is like, wait, for what? Can I help you? Sorry. He sort of follows me. Actually, yes, you can. See, that's the scale there is the one that me and, well, more specifically, Hess was looking for. Hello! Do I know this one? Roll to put a name to a face. Wait, okay. I just rolled with power, didn't I? Yeah. Yes. Did you also level up? Oh, God, no. Oh. I haven't dealt with night or, pa- uh, night or wild yet. Five. On a miss, you don't know them or you owe them. Which is more funny, you owe them something. I want to say, just for office politics, giggles as an office worker... I feel like this is this would be the office curmudgeon and has always is forgetting his cookies. <laughs> you have, still haven't returned the last thing I lent you. I, I did return your pen. She's thinking if it was the pen or something else. What are you working on that could even need this? I am doing some complex alchemical scientific equations, and I need to make sure everything is correct down to the last gram. What are you going to give me for it? He says looking to both of you. Look, I'll make sure she returns it. What do you need? Has just kind of was like, uh, try, I like looking at Angel like, I don't even remember what I bought from him. <laughs> That's the problem. He looks at you, Angel's like, you're, you're the one that has the YouTube and the podcast, right? That's me. I've got some projects I feel like deserve a little bit more attention than they're getting, so... Cute eye roll. He's working on waste track and, like, catch fairies or something. My listeners would definitely be interested in that. Can you give me a spot on your show? I might let you borrow it for the day. For a day. All right, I can do that. All right, and then he very slowly, like, cleans all the stuff up that he was using and packs it up, just being very slow about it. Thank you, Randall, for your generosity. It will not go unnoticed or unappreciated. And just, just cuz. High or low? Low. As he's packing up, someone walks by and it's... It's one of the assistants to one of the higher level of the old men. Okay. She's on the phone and it sounds like she's answering a call for him. And it's just... No, he's on the phone answering a call for him. It's like... No, no. Mr. How is currently at a lunch meeting at... Insert name of fancy place in Oak Ridge. decide later. Yeah, there's several other higher, higher level people as well as um, a new, their new associate. I think he'll be free in a couple hours, I believe. And it's just like as they're walking by, you catch that conversation. Angel's ears perk up. <laughs> Metaphorically speaking. <laughs> if Hess's cat ears are still here, but uh, she gives a side eye to Angel and kind of like does a little head like jerk. Okay. Yeah. She nods and, you know, once Randall is done takes the scale very nicely and smiles. I will be sure to return everything that I borrowed from you, including this, in the best condition possible. Mm-hmm. He's finished, Pat. He just, like, gets up and walks away. 
with your butterscotch cookies. It's caramel. They're the same thing. No, it's not. And then I'm out of here as soon as I can be. <laughs> oh yeah, um, Hess will be walking. It's a nice place. It's on the river. Well, it sounds like a perfect place for lunch. Maybe inform some friends. Ask them if they're interested in meeting you there. Hess will be like sending a message to the group chat. Hey, heads up. Um, we just learned that the stranger's having lunch with a bunch of powerful people. It's at whatever we decide to call. I don't know. Chateau de Luna. There's an actual place. I'm just blanking on where I want this to be. It's like an actual place. It's uh, it's really good food, but it's kind of hard to get a table there. Or uh, we'll decide where later. But yeah, you let your friends know and load up in the car and go to get some lunch and see what information you can get. Tempest Malta is a production of Pseudonym Social, changing reality one story at a time. It is an actual play podcast using Urban Shadows 2E Quick Start Guide, and it's set once again in the town of Oak Ridge, Tennessee. I am your keyboard producer. Hi there, I'm Maria Perry. I'm playing Millie Elza, your local vampy vampire. I am Blaze, and I'll be playing Jason Madison Coleman, the aware. I am Ava Rogers. I will be playing Angel Day, the Sworn. To get more information on this or any of our other shows, check out our website at pseudonymsocial.com.